What do we think the word displacement means? Like where it started to where it is now. Where it started to where it is now? Okay. What else? Displace. Yes. You got to yell, bro. You put it in the wrong place. I put it in the wrong place? Oh, that's what you're saying. The word means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So put in the wrong place. Yep. When the hurricane's not where it's supposed to go. Okay, so connecting all of them. It is saying displacement, right, is definitely where stuff is not supposed to be. It's the damage the hurricane did. So the graph is showing you that over time, the velocity, what's velocity? The speed, the speed of the hurricane and how much damage was done. It was traveling meters south. Okay, so I am not going to put in all of it. However, I'm going to give you kind of a display, right? It's a scatter plot, a little something like this. There's a trend line that comes here. This is zero, zero. Um, it goes up to 160,000. The first couple of notches, 20,000. All right, so somebody's it off about four times already. Just put it on silent because you happen to be in school. 5,000, 10,000, all the way up to 30,000. Okay? So, the first question that is asked on the side is the domain. So, let's talk about it. What is domain? What is domain? We kind of talked about it the other day on Google Meet. What is domain? No, we don't know what domain is, do we? Was anybody on Google Meet? What's domain? The time, okay? So our domain is the time, okay? What's our unit of the time? Seconds, okay? So remember when I said to you that the units was very important? Here's where the unit is really important. Because if a hurricane did a lot of damage, if a hurricane did a lot of damage in three days, do you think that's dramatically different if a hurricane did a lot of damage in 10 seconds? Right? That's a big difference for the damage in a hurricane. So that time is important, but that seconds, that unit is more important. Okay? So for your project, what I want is one sentence to tell me what the domain is. Let's work on that one sentence. Let's try it. One sentence with that domain is. So we said time in seconds. Now make it fit the hurricane. Make that fit the hurricane. Where does it go from what to what? We know it's time in seconds. It goes from what time to what time? Where does the time go? From what time to what time? From zero to thirty. Zero to thirty. What? Zero to thirty thousand. Thirty thousand what? Oh, seconds. Seconds. Okay. So, what? How we write that one sentence? Ready for that one sentence? My domain. Is my time in seconds? From zero to 30,000. Another way you can say that is my domain of the velocity of the hurricane goes from zero to 30,000 seconds. The goal in writing that one sentence is to show me you understand how domain is important in life. Remember I told you that none of my work is going to be for me to see how well you can answer a textbook answer in math. It's always going to be how you can put math in the world. Because Algebra 2 is about higher mathematics. 
Most of the formulas you learn in Algebra 2 are all business math. Means they calculate your bank account, they calculate how you buy a house, how you buy a car, how you calculate your money for any business. One of my friends works at this research company in Norwalk. His entire job, entire job, a big company before they get started comes and hires him to research the probability of success for their business. I can't even believe this is a job, okay? So this is what he does the entire time. Makes graphs to calculate what he thinks is going to happen by studying other businesses like that business. They keep him on staff and every six months he reviews their account to make a new graph. That's his entire job. Yes. You know this is not my classroom, right? Yeah, and nor is it mine, and I, and I forgot to bring one. I'm sorry to interrupt everybody. There is only one here. Okay, never mind. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry. Um, so, when I'm asking you these questions, I'm asking you to act as if you are him. You're working for a company and you're trying to explain. Normally, the people you're explaining this information to, they know nothing about math. Nothing. So you want to put it in the smallest terms that's clear and understanding. You cannot just say, my domain is 0 to 30. They'll have no idea what you're talking about. I promise you. Okay? However, you do want to use the math language for the few people in the room who do understand it because that's how you get paid well when you're showing them that you probably understand. But you want to make sure you explain it thoroughly for the people in the room who do not. Okay? So again, my domain of the velocity of the hurricane is from 0 to 30,000 seconds. Now we're going to move to our range. Think about what you did for your domain. How do I do that same thing with my range? Let's start with what is my range? What is my range? If my domain is time, what is my range? Displacement. Okay? Now, again, I know that displacement is not what you use often. Damage is another word for displacement. Damage. How much damage was done? Okay? Displacement is more saying like the movement of it. That's why they use the word displacement. But I'm okay if you put damage because that shows me still your understanding what happened in the hurricane. Okay? So, give me a sentence. Don't worry, if it's wrong, you won't fail. At least not today. So, range, give me a sentence, just like you did domain. Start a sentence and somebody else can finish it. No? Nobody wants to try? Should I sit back down? Yes. Try one more time. Zero to what? Forty thousand? Yeah, I have to go the other side. Okay, so let me tell you how that sentence doesn't really make sense, right? However, that is all the right information. But remember that your displacement is, that's not how you want to say it. You want to say it as in the velocity caused that displacement. You want to use different words when you're talking about the damage, right? So you're going to say my range, right, is the displacement caused by the velocity from 0 to 160,000 meters south. 
So I'm going to say that again. You want to make sure you understand that the displacement is caused by velocity. Okay? So my range is the displacement or the damage caused by the velocity from 0 to 160,000 meters south. So the language is important because I don't want you to copy and paste, copy and paste, and copy and paste, right? I want you to make sure you understand. That's the point of me giving you these assignments. So if you just say, my domain is 0 to 30,000 seconds, my displacement, my range is 0 to 160 meters, I don't know now that you understand what's really happening in the graph. I need you to relate it to the velocity and how the velocity affects the time in or the displacement. I'm looking for understanding, not for your mathematical textbook answer. That's why I don't tend to give you problems from a textbook. Never have in my seven years. I have always been the teacher who made a problem, sometimes on the spot, because I want you to understand the math. And I also worked and I did the financial advising for our dealership for seven years. I don't know math because I learned it in a book. Before I even went to school, I worked in the field. Then I went back to school to be a math teacher because I hated that job so much. However, it's meant for someone, just not me. All right, x-intercept and y-intercept. What is convenient for this data is that they are the same number, so you can explain them in one sentence. So, so far, let me tell you, you did one sentence here, one sentence here. You wanted to, you can combine this to be one sentence. Your project so far is three sentences. Do we understand that? Remember, this is math. I am not ever, 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 when I say essay in math, I just mean written words. I don't ever mean a five paragraph essay. I don't ever mean when I say write a paragraph that you have to make sure that you have the five to 10 sentences or whatever it is that your English teacher tells you. When I say it, I mean I want you to thoroughly in written word explain what's happening. One sentence for each part is fine with me. If you wanted to break these up to be their own sentence, I'm okay with that. However, I'm gonna also show you how to do that in one sentence. So the x-intercept is where your data crosses over the x-axis. The y-intercept is where your data crosses over the y-axis. Conveniently, our line touches both of them at the same time. Zero, zero. Why? Think about the hurricane. What does an x-intercept and a y-intercept tell us? Something 
over something? Rise over run. Rise over run. So for your homework, I mean for your project, it says make a conjuncture. Do you know what conjuncture means? Anybody? No? It means a guess, right? Educated guess is a conjuncture. So when you are doing these type of projects, you're guessing. You're not giving me exact because that's not really important. Again, when you're talking about business, right? Unless you're talking about their money, they want you to be exact on their money. But when it's something like this, right? How many meters of damage? They don't really need to know the 0.25 seconds of damage, right? But they do want to know the estimated guess. So the slope is also known the rate of change. When it comes to a hurricane, this is important because this is how they calculate how they pay people out, right? So during that last little funky tornado, the shingles on my roof came off. And so my insurance calculates the amount of damage by the rate of change. If the damage was over a larger amount of time, they claim I had time to like prepare. If the damage came in a shorter amount of time, then they pay for it. Sucks, right? But that's really what they would use something like this kind of data for. It's real life. So, slope, rise over run. Let's find our rise over run. Again, I'm not looking for you to do y minus y and x minus x and all that fun stuff where you subtract and divide and all that. I'm not looking for it. I am truly looking for you to pick two points on this line. I would always pick two easy points. Find out where they rise and run. So you can't really see it because we don't have the full graph. However, it only went up one box. How much is one box? 20,000. And then it went over one box, which is? I'm going to tell you because it looks like people are still in the seat. Okay? Now, I know again in algebra, right, you had to simplify that down. Divide 20,000 by 5,000. You do not when you're talking about it in real life. You can use these exact numbers. However, I still need a sentence. Anybody can come up with that sentence? I'll start it. The velocity of the hurricane caused... The velocity of the hurricane caused We never describe rate of change in our form. The velocity of the hurricane caused. Give it a try. Miss Green back there, want to give it a try? Of course, Miss. I was waiting for you to call on me. So we're describing the rate of change, the slope. And I started the sentence with the velocity of the hurricane caused. What do those numbers represent? Remember the 20,000 came from the rise, the 5,000 came from the run. Displacement. You can say it the opposite way. The velocity caused 20,000 meters south displacement for every 5,000 seconds. Now, if you wanted to, you could simplify this, right? 
cancel out those zeros, and I'll have 20 over 5. My son's going to call me 75 times. Yes, dudes. What? Okay, can you learn to text me, babe? Just say, text me on my way. I'm in class. Okay, sorry. Right, that's okay. Okay. So if I simplify that, I can say for every four meter cell, my displacement happens one second. Again, I take this answer just as much as I take that answer. Neither one is wrong for me. Because in real life, it doesn't really matter what you use. Now, for this assignment, there's no equation on here. For your project, you will have to write the equation. Hopefully everybody remembers that. Slope-intercept form. And you substitute in for the slope and the y-intercept. My slope here is 4, or 4 over 1. My y-intercept is 0. So my equation is just x equals 4. Sorry y equals 4x. Questions, comments, concerns? I missed the second sentence. You missed the second sentence yeah. for the slope? Cause the displacement from zero to 160,000 meters south. Everybody done copying this? Can I erase it? Any other questions? Anybody missed anything else? So when you go to do your project, you should have this piece of paper out and use it as a reference. Because your project is very similar to this. The problem is ice cream cells and temperature, but it's very, very simple. Okay? The next problem is a table. There's a few things that are different for a table. Because of time, I'm going to move a little bit faster with this one. We'll hopefully we understand it a little bit more, so that's okay. Alright, so we're still going to do the same main things when it comes to a linear function. And, however, the difference is you can't tell a slope from this unless you're calculating it. And no one's ever going to ask you to find a slope for this because no one knows what slope means unless they're looking at a graph. That's what the truth is. If you went into an average business meeting and you said the word slope, they're not going to know what you mean unless they're actually looking at a graph so they can put that picture view with that mathematical view. So the domain is slightly different for this. Someone tell me one sentence for the domain. Because we should be really good right now, right? One sentence for the domain. What is the domain for this set of data? The ticket price. The ticket price. What about the ticket price? Uh, 
We go from two hundred dollars to four fifty. So there's a difference. The last graph was continuous, right? Because the domain was time, and you have one second, two seconds, but you also have one point five seconds, right? Ticket price is different. When I sell tickets, right? Our school play they usually sell seven dollar tickets and then ten dollar tickets. Do they usually sell that in between eight dollar tickets? No, right? So ticket price doesn't simply go from 200. Nigel, what you doing? No, we said about like 45. We said about 15 minutes. You got plenty of time, girl. Plenty. So it doesn't go from 200 to 450. Okay? It goes from 200 to 450 in increments of 50. Or you can say, my domain is my ticket price, $200, $450, $300, you can list them. But you can't just simply say from $200 to $450, because that's not your true domain for a table. That only works for a graph. A table has distinctive points, and you have to list them or you're not truly listing your data. So, my range is what? My profit, okay? So, my profit in millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Remember again that unit is important. This is dollars, this is millions. You wanna make sure that's clarified. Especially when you're talking about people's money. And again, you would list them. Okay, my x-intercept and y-intercept, you're not really gonna have here. It's, your x-intercept is when this equals zero, your y-intercept is when this equals zero. So you would simply say that it can't be found with this given data. Minimum and maximum, so this is my data. Describe my maximum. So I'm going to describe my maximum for this data. No? So I'm going to describe my maximum for this data. Okay. Hey, where's Jolie? Jolie, cross the wall? Cross the wall down a little bit more. Okay. You're welcome. No one can find where my maximum is? Let me read them out loud. 3.08, 3 3.52, 3.76, 3.82, 3.70, 3.38. Which one's my maximum? 3.38. Okay, describe to me. Describe that 3.38. What does that represent? What does that stand for? Hmm? Millions of dollars. Okay. What about it? Yep, that's the most you made, but you didn't sell 450 with that. Sorry, I didn't write it in the order. So this goes with this 350. So, somebody tell me what happened with the maximum? Can I say that in a sentence? This company made what? Say the information he said just in a sentence. This company made. Go. What you got here? Yeah. Millions. Did you say millions? I didn't hear that. Okay. So they made 3.82. The maximum they made, though, because we're talking about the maximum. The maximum money they made was three, well, they can make, is $3.82 million by selling 350 tickets. 
This is a projection, not what actually happened. This is the company, this is that person, right, my friend, telling their company, you're gonna make your maximum amount of money selling your tickets for $350, you'll make 3.8 million. Why won't they make their maximum money selling them for 450? Because it's too expensive. So this is what this company did. This is what my friend does. He says, if you sell it for $200, you're gonna make 3.8 million, and so forth. And he's saying, if you sell them all the way for $450, you're only gonna make 3.8 million. 3.3 million, sorry. You don't wanna make less money. You wanna to come to a happy medium because this is where I project you're gonna make the most money. That's where that maximum comes in of being very important. It's not always for the highest amount. This is why a company hires a mathematician because most people don't know how to create this kind of data. We need an equation for this. So they hire this guy, they pay him $100 billion to make an equation, not $100 billion, but they pay him a lot of money to make an equation to make this little graph for them. And then they present it. And they say the maximum amount of money you're gonna make is $3.8 million dollars if you sell your tickets for $350. Minimum, same instance. What's my minimum? Tell me a whole sentence. No what? Minimum. Nothing? Nobody wants to speak. Tell me a sentence for our minimum. You know our maximum, what's our minimum? Yes. Yep, so say a whole sentence. Start it for you. The minimum the company is going to make is yeah, from selling no, 200 tickets, $200 price tickets. Because this is the price, not the amount. So you're going to make the minimum if you sell your tickets for $200, you're going to make the minimum of $3.8. $8 million. You're going to make the minimum of $3.8 million if you sell your tickets for $200. So you can say it either way. Questions on these things? Okay, I still have one more class to review the project with before I actually put it up. The project that is up there now is just for you to view it. Excuse me. When I put it up for doing, it's going to have a rubric attached to it. And it's going to have a due date. So for now, I just put it up there for you to view it. This way you can ask me questions. The plan for the next couple days. Right? <clears throat> I'm going to assign page four in your packet now. It's another word problem, and it's just describing things. I'm gonna give you some review on a program called Albert. I know the science department uses it. I have never used it with an actual class, so I don't know what the student view looks like. So, once I assign those problems, which probably be today, if not tomorrow, I want you to do them, and then I want you to reflect on them. I want you to say, Miss, it was easy to navigate. Miss, it was easy to navigate, but it was kind of hard to do the math. Miss, I like the way they broke it down for me. Miss, I absolutely hated this website, right? Those are important things for me to know because if we go on distant learning, I need to make sure that it's a platform everyone can use, okay? Last year I used the platform, it was awesome, but we don't have it anymore, okay? So this is new for me and I have to try something else.
Everybody understand? Okay. So I'm